In this video, we introduce basic concepts of electrochemistry and apply them to determine the conditions needed to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water by electrolysis. In the previous videos, we have seen that redox reactions involve two half reactions, an oxidation, which increases the oxidation number of an atom from which electrons are removed, and a reduction, which decreases or reduces the oxidation number of another atom by receiving electrons from the first one. A redox reaction can take place even when both half reactions are separated in space, provided they are linked first by an electrical conductor and second by an electrolyte generally referred to as a salt bridge. For more on the combination of half cell reactions, please check the video Measures of Electricity. When two half cells are combined, a voltage is produced. The maximum voltage before any dissipation takes place is the difference between the two half cell potentials. The half cell potential can be calculated with the Nernst equation, which relates the half cell potential to the potential at standard conditions, the number of electrons involved, and the reaction product, Q. Similarly to chemical thermodynamics, the standard conditions correspond to the case where Q is equal to 1 as a result of taking all activities being equal to 1. In electrochemistry, we work with the half-cell potentials of reduction reactions. If we consider oxidation reactions, then it is necessary to change the sign of the reduction potential to obtain the oxidation potential. The reference reaction for the potential scale is the proton reduction, which is two protons plus two electrons gives one hydrogen gas molecule. The number of electrons involved is two, and Q is the ratio between the partial pressure of hydrogen and the product of the proton and electron activities, each to the power of two, because of the reaction stoichiometry. Substituting these expressions into the Nernst equation, The half cell potential for proton reduction is found to depend on the activity of the proton, as well as on the partial pressure of hydrogen and on the activity of the electron, both of which are taken to be 1 out of convention for the reference state. Specifically, our half cell potential ends up with a dependence on pH. Increasing the pH decreases the half-cell potential, and vice versa. By convention, the standard half-cell potential for the reduction of protons is taken as zero and refers to standard conditions of unit proton activity, meaning that the pH is equal to zero. This potential serves as a reference for all other half-cell potentials. With this, the Nernst equation tells us that the potential for the proton reduction is simply minus 0.059 times pH at ambient temperature. This result can be represented graphically by plotting the half cell potential versus pH. Electrochemical cells for which the combinations of pH and potential lie below this line lead to the production of hydrogen gas from protons present in water. Another important half cell is the reduction of oxygen to produce hydroxyl ions. It has the same dependence on pH as the reduction of protons, 
and is therefore parallel to it on this graph. It lies above it, starting at 1.23 volts for pH equals 0, so that its potential is 1.23 minus 0 0.059 times pH, again at ambient temperature. Half cells with a potential below this line lead to the reduction of oxygen. In contrast, combinations of potentials and pH lying above it lead to the reverse reaction producing oxygen gas from hydroxyl ions present in water. The zone in between hydrogen and oxygen production defines the region of water stability. To decompose water into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis, one should combine twice the reduction of protons with once the oxidation of hydroxyls, which is the reverse reaction to oxygen reduction. The resulting reaction involves four hydroxyls reacting with four protons to give two water molecules, two hydrogen gas molecules, and one molecule of oxygen gas. Half-cell potentials are given per electron and can only be directly combined for balanced reactions for which the number of electrons given and gained are equal. As this is the case for the hydrolysis of water, the potential for this reaction is simply the difference between the reduction half-cell potentials for the proton and for oxygen. This turns out to be minus 1.23 volts and in this case does not depend on pH. The negative sign means that this reaction is not spontaneous. Therefore, to produce the electrolysis of water, a potential of at least 1.23 volts must be applied. In summary, the Nernst equation allows us to calculate the equilibrium potential of a half cell for conditions deviating from standard conditions. As an example, for proton reduction, we can use the Nernst equation to take into account the effect of pH. This may be expressed graphically, plotting half cell potentials versus pH, which is convenient for determining conditions allowing, or not, redox reactions to take place. We have applied this to the case of water and determined the potential needed to produce electrolysis. In a subsequent video, we examine the application of these concepts to the Pourbet diagrams, which are of central importance in corrosion science.